name is Miss Afton and I am the children's librarian at the Alexander Hamilton Library here in Waynesboro and we are so excited to be joining the Institute at Renfrew this year for their 31st annual Youth Fest. Now we couldn't be together in person at the park but we're still pretty excited about some of the online programs today so make sure you check out those and our theme for today is prehistoric in the park. So we are excited to share some of our library books with you all about dinosaurs, as well as some really fun dinosaur songs. Now, I have a couple questions for you before we get started. First, do you know when the dinosaurs lived? Was it 1999? Now, it was a really, really long time ago, so millions of years ago. Now, do you know where the dinosaurs lived? Did they live in an apartment in Waynesboro? Or maybe a house in Quincy? No, they lived in jungles and forests and deserts, swamplands. They lived in the wild. So today, let's travel back in time with our imaginations and we'll travel to an enchanted dinosaur forest. So this video that we'll play in the background today was made by Magic Forest on Patreon. And if you see any dinosaurs walking by, let me know, okay? All right, let's get ready to travel. Can you close your eyes with me? And we'll count down from three. So close your eyes. Three, two, one. So our first song today is our usual hello song for our story time videos during our summer reading program. Today though, we'll do it with a dinosaur twist. So our song is called, We Clap and Sing Hello. So today we'll sing the song, it's to the music of the farmer in the dell, and we'll clap and sing hello. So can you show me your claps? All right, and we'll clap and sing hello with our friends at story time. We'll clap and sing hello. And then of course we give our biggest claps. So I wanna see your crazy claps. All right, then after that, we'll do a very special dinosaur version. So get your dinosaur claws and your dinosaur teeth ready. But first, let's clap. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. Let's see that big crazy clap. Oh! All right, very nice. Now, let's get ready to roar and sing hello, just like a dinosaur. So we aren't sure what dinosaurs sounded like in real life, but I want you to make your best dinosaur roar. All right, maybe you're a hungry T-Rex. Maybe you're a small velociraptor. It doesn't matter. I just want to hear your roar together. So we'll roar and sing hello. Let's sing. We roar and sing hello. We roar and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we roar and sing hello. Let's hear your dinosaur roar. All right, very good. I, I heard some great dinosaur roars. So to start today, I actually wanted to read you a really, really funny book that goes along with our library summer reading theme. So this year we are celebrating Imagine Your Story. So stories all about fantasy and imagination. So one of the classic stories that we tell with fairy tales and nursery rhymes is Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where Goldilocks goes to the bear's house and she eats the porridge that's too hot and too cold and then just right. Then she sits in the chairs that are too hard and too soft and just right. And then she goes to sleep in the bed that's just right and the bears come home to find her. But in our story today, Goldilocks and the Three what? The three dinosaurs retold by Mo Willems. The story is a little different. 
So let's see what happens to Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. And have you seen any, seen any dinosaurs around us yet? Okay. Remember to let me know if you see some. We have Goldilocks and the three penguins? No. The three dogs? No. The three goldfish? No. Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. As retold by Mo Willems. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs. Papa dinosaur, mama dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. So there are three dinosaurs in the house. So we have Papa, Mama, and Baby. Nope, a fun Norwegian visitor. And you can see their house has some funny stuff like a big phone, home sweet dinosaur home. So what are they going to do next? One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Why do you think they might be making pudding that's really hot or really cold or just right? Who's going to eat that? Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It's finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. So where are they going? Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are uh, someplace else. So they're going away. Do you think someone will come to their house? Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh. Ha ha ha! But it was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else and we're definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. So off they go. And of course, they're not hiding and waiting for a child. Or are they? Do you see them in the woods? Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing by. So here comes Goldilocks. If you see the sign, it says 0. .2 miles to trap? No. Very nice home. And here it's getting closer. Just then the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. Then the loud, or the loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, be patient, Papa Dinosaur. The trap is not yet sprung. But that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel, right? Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. So if you found a really big house in the woods, would you just go inside? I don't think I would either, but Goldilocks did. And look, it says, welcome. <laughs> so these dinosaurs are pretty sneaky. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Well, what do you think she'll find? Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls 
of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway, because hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? Would you eat the whole bowl anyway? I might. The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. What do you think PD stands for? Or MD? The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. Why do you think they want her to eat all of that chocolate? So soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. So in Goldilocks and the Three Bears, she tries all the chairs. Do you think she'll do that now? The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. But the third chair was too tall tall because they're dinosaurs right so their chairs are really big goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair so she hiked over to the bedroom when she got there goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big what's going on around here groaned the exhausted girl the bears that live here must be nuts she thinks that bears live there. Just then, the room filled with a loud booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. <laughs> Delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. So Goldilocks doesn't look too sure now, does she? Do you think she wants to take a nap? Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. So she looked around the house, home sweet dinosaur home, and hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. It says, wipe your talons. Just then, a loud plane flew by which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling now or charge or the Norwegian expression for chewy bon bon time. Suddenly and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. What do you think they found? But they were too late. Door. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. So the moral of this story is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. So now Goldilocks is going to the bears and look at how excited she is to see them. So that's the right story for her. And the moral for dinosaurs is lock the back door. If they had locked the back door, would Goldilocks have been able to escape? No, and they'd have a yummy bonbon treat. All right, and that 
is the end of Goldilocks and the Three Bears Dinosaurs. So we hope that you enjoyed this story. This is a really, really fun one that is available to check out from the library right now. So our next part, Did you hear that dinosaur? Pretty fun. All right, our next part is to do a really fun dinosaur chant together called Dinosaur Dinosaur. So for this, I'm going to need your help showing me different dinosaur body parts. All right, let's do it twice together. And I'm actually going to move my chair. So we have Dinosaur Dinosaur, turn around. Can you turn around? Then dinosaur, dinosaur, stomp the ground. Use your big dinosaur feet. Then dinosaur, dinosaur, show your claws. Let's see those claws. Dinosaur, dinosaur, snap your jaws. Can I see your big dinosaur teeth? Arr, 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 arr. Pretty scary. Then dinosaur, dinosaur, turn around. Dinosaur, dinosaur, sit back down. And we'll sit down. So let's try it one more time. All right, and let's see if we can speed up and do it to rhythm. All right, so we have dinosaur, dinosaur, turn around. Dinosaur, dinosaur, stomp the ground. Dinosaur, dinosaur, show your claws. Dinosaur, dinosaur, snap your jaws. Dinosaur, dinosaur, turn around. Dinosaur, dinosaur, sit back down. All right, good job. Very well done, dinosaurs. And now it's time to check out some more books from the library. But first, do you hear something? Freeze. Oh, that was a close one. All right, let's check out a book. So our next book is a really, really funny one that's more information. So this is a nonfiction book, which means it's not a story. It's all information that's true. And it's called, What If You Had T-Rex Teeth and Other Dinosaur Parts. So I wanted to take a look at some of the funny things in this story. All right, it was published by Scholastic, written by Sandra Markle, and illustrated by Howard McMillan. So do you have a favorite dinosaur? Maybe your favorite dinosaur is a stegosaurus. So what would you do if you had a tail like a stegosaurus? What would you do, oh, this is one of my favorites, if you had a crest like a parasol, oh, like a parasol all of us. <laughs> Some of these dinosaur names are pretty hard to say. So a parasaural office. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and read a couple of these because they're so interesting. So you can see here, what would you do if you woke up one day and you had a giant parasaural office crest on the back of your head? Well, parasaural office had an amazingly long crest on the top of its head. Some crests were as long as five feet. That's almost as tall as I am. X-rays and CT scans of fossil skulls have shown scientists that this crest was full of the dinosaur's breathing tubes. These tubes stretched to the end of the crest and back again before going down its throat. Scientists tried blowing air through model crests to figure out what this dinosaur might have sounded like, and they learned that the length of the crest affected the sound it made giving each Parasaurolophus its own voice. So isn't that cool? The size and the length of the crest changed how their voice sounded. So every one sounded different. All right, then here was another really funny one that I liked. So this is Edmontosaurus, right? And what do you see on the boy from this dinosaur? Yeah, if you woke up, what would you do if you woke up one day with an Edmontosaurus 
mouth. So Edmontosaurus's shovel-shaped jaws made its mouth perfect for scooping up shrubby plants. As its jaw muscles pulled its mouth closed, the hard beak at the front snipped off each bite. Next, muscles moved the dinosaur's big jaws to crush its food between bunches of small teeth. Almost 700 total. Can you imagine having 700 teeth in your mouth? All to chew plants. They were packed so close together that they acted like giant molars then scientists believe this dino wasn't picky and ate whatever it could scoop up. Leaves, berries, seeds, and even little shellfish. Oh, those poor shellfish. So this is another really cool dinosaur. And what I like is it has the information on the main part of the page and also some really fun facts along the way. Let's do one more. Maybe you know this one. This is Spinosaurus. And what do you see on this boy's back? Yeah, he woke up with a Spinosaurus sail. What would you do if you woke up with that? So Spinosaurus had a giant sail on its back. This was made up of skin coated with keratin, the same tough stuff human fingernails are made of. And it was held up by six foot long spines. So this is taller than I am. This dino skeleton shows its backbones were locked together, and scientists believe that kept its sail upright and always fully spread open. All the better to show off. The giant sail was sure to catch a future mate's eye, and it, maybe, made Spinosaurus look too big for others to attack. So for this, they're saying that that was always up and it might have helped to catch a girlfriend or to protect it by doing what some cats and dogs do where when they get scared, they puff up really big and their fur stands up. Well, for the Spinosaurus, he was always ready and always defending. So dinosaur parts could be cool for a while, but you don't need a 30 foot long neck to reach your food or a super strong bite to eat it. Your voice sounds just fine without long head crests to fine tune it. And if you don't need a giant sail to be note, and you don't need a giant sail to be noticed, but if you could keep any dinosaur part for more than a day, what kind would be right for you? So if you were to pick a dinosaur part to keep, what would you do? Would it be a super long neck? Would it be scary sharp teeth? Would it be that crest for a powerful voice or a sail to help you stand out? Luckily, you don't have to choose. You aren't living long ago in the age of dinosaurs. You're living now. All of your parts are people parts, and they are exactly what you need to be the one and only you. So this is a fun one that has a good message to end, but we have this and lots of other dinosaur bo books available from the library. Now just check in our catalog at ahmfl.org. We'll finish today with one more song that's really, really fun, and we'll change up the words a little bit to go just with our dinosaur theme. So our last song today is usually called Sleeping Bunnies. But today we'll call it Sleeping Dinos. Right, so I need your help. Can you get your dinosaur claws? Maybe if you're being a T-Rex, you can get your two little fingers. And it's time for us to go to sleep. So can I hear your dino snore? How about? <laughs> All right, and let's listen to the song. When you hear that it's time to wake up, I want you to wake up and get ready. All right? So we have a sleeping dinosaur. Oh, sleeping dino, sleeping till noon. Shall we wake them with a merry tune? Oh, so still, are they ill? Dinos, wake up! And now let's do a dino stomp. Oh, stump little dino, stump little dino, stump little dino, stump, stump, stump. Stump little dino, stump little dino, stump little dino, stump, stump, stump. 
So that's how our song goes. It's really fun to pretend to be a sleeping dinosaur and then to wake up and stomp around. So let's try it one more time. All right, and I'm gonna move my chair. So we have, let's go to sleep. Sleeping dino, sleeping till noon. Shall we wake them with a merry tune? Oh, so still, are they ill? Dinos, wake up now! And stump little dino, stump little dino, stump little dino, stump, stump, stump. Stump little dino, stump little dino, stump little dino, stump, stump, stump. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a dinosaur claw clap. Very good job. Right, and thanks everyone for joining us today for a fun mini story time all about prehistoric creatures with dinos and the Institute at Renfrew. Shh. All right. So again, thanks for joining us for Prehistoric in the Park. We are so excited to be celebrating with the in the Institute at Renfrew. We hope that you enjoy the rest of the day. Check out the other videos online to celebrate Youth Fest and have a great day, Waynesboro.